do. And I'll speak for myself. I don't think I do it enough, and that's prayer. And the title of the message is Power Through Prayer. And if you would turn in your Bibles to Nehemiah, the first chapter, that's right after the book of Ezra. And let us pray. Father, we just thank you. And it's such an honor to stand up in front of your people, Lord, and give your word. And God, we ask that you would just take this word, Lord, and bring it deep into our hearts as we draw closer and closer to you every day that we walk this journey of life, knowing that you're with us every step of the way and that we can get your ear at any time when, it's, when we pray to you and there is power in prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Nehemiah, chapter 1, verses 4 to 6a. And it says, When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness to those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now night and day. Amen. Let's see what the Old Testament prophet Nehemiah has to teach us today concerning prayer. Nehemiah needed God at this time in his life, and he needed God to come through to, for him because there was work that had to be completed in Jerusalem. And when you read Nehemiah, you will understand that there is certainly power through prayer. Nehemiah went to the God of heaven. He didn't go to his friends first. He didn't go to the local newspapers. He went to God first with his prayer request, and he knew that God would direct his paths and his words. After all, he could have said, too bad for them in Jerusalem. I'm eating good and I'm living good right here in the king's palace. I don't have to do anything. And so let me give you a little background of what was going on here at the time. Nehemiah at this time was the cupbearer for the king of Persia, King Artaxerxes. Now, don't just glance over the fact and say, well, he was nothing more than a cupbearer for the king, uh, thinking that that's all he had to do was hand the, the cup for the king to drink. Nehemiah was brought up in the Persian court among all these idolaters, among all these sinners, yet he was a man of God, a prophet of God. His character was of a person who loved God and knew that God would get him through, and he wasn't tainted by all of those things that was around him. We have to be very careful as Christians today in the workplace. We don't live in a bubble. And it's very easy when the boss laughs at something stupid that most people will laugh. Uh, it's very difficult to go upstream and fight the current when you know that things are wrong and people will stay you down and make fun of you. But that is what is being a Christian is all about. It is standing firm in our faith and believing the God who has touched our heart that he will get us through in anything that we come against when we pray and we seek his face. So we find that Nehemiah was a trusted official. He was more than just a head butler. He was in a position of great responsibility and privilege. He had, the king, he had to taste the king's food and wine, and you can rest assured that was top shelf. He didn't go in for a hamburger if you're the king. And so Nehemiah ate good and had good drink. Bible scholars say that a cupbearer was a man who stood close to the king in public. He had to be handsome, cultured, knowledgeable in court procedures, and be able to talk with the king and advise him when asked. So when Nehemiah asked Hanani how things were going in Jerusalem, he was saddened to hear the news. Scripture tells us why Nehemiah was sad. And it isn't it great that Scripture will interpret Scripture. I love that. 
If you seek the word of God and you seek meaning, you can find it through the thread of scripture. It's just might not going to pop out at you, but you have to get your pick and shovel out and you have to do some research and you have to do your cross references before you run to a commentator and see what the word of God is telling you. And it says here why Nehemiah was said in chapter one and verse three. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach and disgrace. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. Now you have to understand that this remnant, it's now been a hundred years since they've been there. The walls are still broken down. The gates have not been put up. What did Nehemiah do? He went to God in prayer. God, he knew, would have the answers for him and would direct his paths. Regarding prayer, one Bible commentator said this about it. Prayer is not to persuade God to do something that he didn't intend to do. Prayer is to get you and me in, in line with the program of God. That's what prayer is all about. Only God has complete power to change things for his best. So we find that Nehemiah right away goes to God in prayer. And this goes for us today. Our Lord is there for you and me. In every, every change of life, in everything that we hear, and everything that we do, he loves us and he cares for us, and we have power through prayer with Jesus. We heard about Matthew. I got a call the other day from someone I went to high school with, someone who lived right around the corner for me in Ozone Park. We played ball together. Uh, he's in uh, real difficult shape at this moment. Cancer has metastasized and uh, hadn't spoken to him in a year, got on the phone, and uh, he knew who I was and who my God is, and I came right out with it after the initial, how are you, what's the procedures, what the doctor's doing, and I said, Doug, do you know who the Lord Jesus Christ is in your life? And he said, yes, I do. I said, then we rely on God's power. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day, but I know that God is in control of everything we do. And so prayer is needed. And so when Nehemiah heard these words, he said, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. Why was Nehemiah so sad when he heard that the walls were not rebuilt? Walls are very important. They offer safety. They showed opposing armies that there was strength behind those walls. So he went to God in prayer and he knew that there was power in his prayer to our God. Today we want everything now. We do. We want our coffee made in 30 seconds. The percolator, you might as well throw it out if anybody has it anymore. It takes about 45 minutes to get that thing hot. I tried it about a month ago. Went right back to the Keurig. We can cook a meal now in 30 minutes that takes two hours. Anything happens in the world, we'll know about it in a minute. It comes across the internet. Or if you're good at that, great. But we'll know about it. And same with our prayers. For some of us, we want the Lord to answer within 15 minutes, or we say that God is not listening to us. Well... Nehemiah prayed and he fasted four days, the scripture says, not 15 minutes. And I remember Marianne and I began praying about something in July, many years ago. I guess it was, stop it. I guess it was almost nine years ago now. And in October, we had not gotten an answer. And we said, is God hearing us? I said, God's hearing us. I'm not making a move until I know that I got an answer from God. Well, in the beginning of November, we got our answer, and I made my move. Now, folks, God can answer us in two minutes. That's his prerogative. And sometimes it's a lifetime. But know this. He hears our prayer. He hears our cry. Church, sometimes we got to be persistent in our prayer. God moves in his time and not ours. 
We don't control God. He controls us. But I know that he hears us and he will answer us. Proverbs 15, 29 says this. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. In 1 Peter 3, 12, he writes, For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The same can be said in Psalm 34. God is guaranteeing me and you that he's going to hear our prayer. He is not guaranteeing that he's going to hear the prayer of the evil people. So whatever is going on in this world, and we're moving at a fast pace, now that I've just turned 50, I can see things are moving. This, this is a slow crowd. Slow crowd. <laughs> things are really moving fast. You know, we're hearing all sorts of nonsense. I don't believe anything anymore. I, my father was right. Believe nothing you hear and half of what you can actually read and see. But I know one thing. God is absolute. God is truth. We can take this word. We can rely on this word and not the daily news or any other TV anchor or whatever they say. They're all full of baloney at times. Hey, last night I went to sleep. We're going to get a blizzard. We got 40 tons of snow, assault. We're going to get this. They're scaring the people half to death. I wake up, I look out the window. It's raining. And I was telling the pastor, well, that's enough. Some folks ain't going to come to church today. If it's too hot, they don't come. If it's too cold, they don't come. We need to be in church every day, folks. We need to be worshiping our God, praying to our God. Who else are we going to pray to? Amen? Yeah. Nehemiah prayed to the king that, that the king would let him go. This was a tough thing. We need to pray and pray often. Not only when we hit the brick wall. Not only when things are not going well. And they will not go well for us in this life at times. But we need to pray to Jesus. Who has the power to deliver us from all of these things. When we view our world today. We can come up with many things that are powerful. There are some people who are immensely rich and control vast corporations and yield much power. Or you can look to our own military and you can see great power. I read that one nuclear submarine can take out the entire um, South America with those nuclear warheads that they have. Our aircraft carriers have about 80 warplanes that can do such great damage. But these worldly things are nothing compared to the power of God. They are nothing. God spoke this whole universe and keeps it going just by his spoken word. Let there be light. Boom, there was light. Right? I mean, all these powerful things are nice. God is much more powerful. Hebrews 1, 3 says, He is the radiance of his glory. That's Jesus. And the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. He's got this whole thing just speaking it out. So by the power of his word, everything is held together. Jesus also created all things by his word. John 1, 3 says, All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. And so by Jesus, all things are held together. We as people think that we're so smart. And I find one thing that misses the mark with a lot of folks. It's called being humble. Folks, I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many letters you've got after your name. If you don't have love, if you don't have humbleness in your heart, you have nothing. Amen? I've run into a lot of doctors. Pastor Stephen, Pastor Sharon have also been the same. You go to hospital visits all over this city and state. Some of these doctors think that, you know, they're so high and mighty. Some of them think that they got this smart by studying, and part of that is true. But I can tell you that God has his hand on each and every one of us. I don't care what we have been doing in our life. There is a need for every one of us to do all sorts of things. And being a doctor, 
being a sanitation worker, a fireman, a policeman, whatever you, a pastor, whatever you want to call it, God has ordained you to do that, then you do it to the best of your ability. Amen? These captains of industry, billionaires, presidents, and kings, and sports figures, don't get hung up with these sports figures. Please, we're only looking at them for maybe three hours or two hours of a game. I don't know what these people do after they're not playing sports. I'll look to Jesus all the time, every time. They're all going to pass away, but God's word will last forever. Luke 21, 33, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Jesus is the most powerful in the universe because he is God and no one can outdo him. No one. Do not be afraid of anybody. If you are a Christian, you are blood washed. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Walk with your head up like you own everything because in reality, you do. We serve a mighty God who is never going to leave us or abandon us. So let's review some of the things. There's only two of them I want to go over that Nehemiah did that made him successful and that can make us successful in God's eyes. The first thing is that there is power through prayer. In Christianity, we talk about prayer. In our church at East Rockaway Nazarene, we have a prayer line, and it's fantastic. You'll get a text. I know how to do that, Bob, text. And I'll see, and we pray. It takes a minute to lift that person up in prayer. And when folks need prayer, there's about 90 people that are on that prayer list, and we start praying for that person. I'm on a prayer line myself every morning, Monday through Friday, 7.15 in the morning, unless this old body gives out, and once in a while it does, and I don't get up till 9, but that's, that doesn't happen too often. Prayer is a great benefit that we have in our Christian life. And as one writer said, it is also one of the most neglected. I read the following in Decision Magazine regarding prayer. And this is what it said. Prayer is a battle to be fought by believers during every moment of this journey called life. It is where our victories are won, our enemies are defeated, and our hope is refreshed. Nehemiah knew that there was a need for prayer. He knew that the remnant in Jerusalem was in need of God's help. So we prayed to God that the king would find favor towards him. And that is exactly what we should be doing. Making our request to God, talking to him, and then let God move on our behalf. The scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, we're pretty familiar with this. Be anxious or worry uh, for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made, be made known to God. Now, I, I have to put an addendum on this. Folks, I live in the real world like you do. And when the doctor gives you a report that may not be very pleasing, maybe downright scary, there are times when we'll get a little upset. There are times when we'll be worried. And if you say you're not, you're not telling the truth. But what this scripture means is that don't let this worry get you to a degree where you cannot move. Pick up the phone. Get on the prayer line. Talk to a mature Christian. Tell him or her what is going on in your life, and I need prayer. Ask for prayer. Ask the God of heaven for prayer. He will come through. A little while ago, I think it was a year ago, I went in for one of these tests where you have to drink 45 gallons of water, and then you can't go to the bathroom. Now, this is really amazing to me. Of course, my wife was with me, and she's much, much more patient. And I saw people come, had an 8 o'clock appointment. I saw people coming in at 8, 5 after 8, 10 after. That burns me to begin with. And I'm sitting there with like a camel with all this water in me. At 20 after 8, I got up to the woman and I said, listen, I got to get in this room or I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. We'll do this another time. Oh, no, we're going to get you in. Yeah, it was 10 more minutes. This was a test. I get in. They do the test. The next day, I get a call from the doctor. Uh, we see something that uh, we don't like. Well, what do you see? I don't know. We see something we don't like. Now, you know, you're not going to go any further. We want you to take another test. So I go in and take another test. I don't have to drink all this water, but I go in and take this other test. A week goes by. 
week and a half goes by. I had to call the doctor. Oh, I didn't call you? No. That's why I'm calling you. Oh, everything's all right. It's just a small pimple on the, on the kidney. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Maybe you will call me next year. You know. So, yeah, we worry sometimes. Let's be honest about this. We do worry. We worry how are we going to pay these bills at, at the end of the month or the beginning of the month. Let me put a plug in for tithe folks here. Pay your tithes. You don't pay your tithes, don't get a blessing from God. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Do you think at times I like, Pastor Steve can tell you, we talk about this. Do you think at times I like writing that check? I got a big check in December. Do uh, you think I like tithing on that? For a second. But it never crossed my mind not to do it. I want to be up here telling you what to do, and I'm not going to do it? Uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. We're all in this boat together. But we can't be anxious in the sense that it's going to tie up our lives, where it's going to say we can't move. Worry and anxiety is a human uh, reaction to trouble and turmoil in our lives. Remember this, though. There's a couple of things. Remember who Jesus is. Remember who you are praying to. Give thanks to God. Hold on to the promises God has given us in his word. And we can get that from our current study on Wednesday. And there are a couple other things. I will not fear, worry, or be anxious, because God is always with me. Always. I will not doubt. God is always in control. I will not despair. God is always good. I will not falter. God is always watching. I will not fail. God is always victorious. And so we are in Christ. When we do this, then we get God's peace that will flood our souls and will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. There are things that we run into. I think I told you folks one time when uh, it wasn't Sandy. No, um, the oil tank had leaked when I had oil, went into the ground. I had the NSA, the FBI, the CIA. I had everybody there. And the guy is telling me, oh, you're in trouble. We got to get all these folks down here. <laughs> For a slight moment, for a slight moment, I'm going to be honest, I was going to take out my badge and tell the guy, you're not getting anybody down here. But I don't live by that rule anymore. I live by the rule of Christ. I said, okay, whatever you got to do, you got to do. And the first guy shows up on the scene. He said, it's going to be $19,000. That's good. He might as well said it'd be a million dollars because I didn't have the $19,000. And Marianne said to me, wait a minute. You pray for all these people? And we're not praying for ourselves. You're right. Right there in the yard, these guys are working. They're looking at us. We went before the God of heaven. That happens again. We're in trouble. We went before the God of heaven, honestly, folks. And I prayed. I had this peaceful wave come over me. And I just said, it'll be all right. Honestly, the next day I got a call. Uh, it's not $19,000. I was waiting for the guy to say it's 30000 <laughs> He said, it's nothing. There are only two insurance companies that will cover this without a rider, and you had one of them. I didn't have it. God had it. He knew all along. Nehemiah prayed for the success of Jerusalem, and he didn't pray for himself, if you'll notice that. He prayed for the success of Jerusalem. He wanted to honor God in his work, and that's what we should do. We should be honoring God in everything we do. God answered his prayer because in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4, the king asked Nehemiah for his request. And Nehemiah asked the king that he be let go of his duties and return to Jerusalem and help rebuild it. Nehemiah had a comfortable job in the king's palace. No heavy lifting, no manual labor. He wore good clothes. He ate good food. He didn't have to do anything. But he wanted to finish the work for God in Jerusalem, so the king allowed him to go back. He also asked the king for letters for the governors of the provinces that he would be allowed to pass through, go to Judah, and another letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, so he could get all the lumber he needed to complete the work. See, he just didn't pray for a little thing. He prayed for the whole shebang. I need to be let go. I need this. I need letters for this. 
He got it all through God. The king then gave him letters. Why? Scripture tells us why. Again, it interprets itself in uh, Nehemiah 2, in verse 8b, it says, And the king granted them to me because the good hand of my God was on me. When God's hand is on us, folks, you're going to go through everything with him. Nothing is going to stop you. I didn't say that everything was going to be rosy and that you wouldn't have any hurdles to go over, but you will as God lifts you up and gets you through these things. Why was the king so willing to help Nehemiah? Because Nehemiah was prayed up and God's favor was on him. When our God gives us his direction for you to go, no one would be able to stop you from finishing what God has placed in your heart. Again, the road may not always be easy. There may be some dips in it. There may be some detours. But don't worry about those things. God will get us through. One other thing the king gave to Nehemiah, he gave him, with him, the king sent officers of the army and horsemen. Guys, we win. I don't know if you know that. Just read the last book. We win. There's nothing to fear here. It's a win-win situation. Nobody wants to leave this earth before God says it's time. We all want to hang around myself personally. I hope God gives me a phone call and says, tomorrow you're going. I'm running to the deli. I'm telling you the truth. I'm getting every box of Yankee doodles that I can consume. I'm not taking a medicine. I'm eating it all. And then I'll watch a nice TV show and go to sleep and wake up in the arms of God. It don't always happen like that. But <laughs> I wish it did. You know, my brother-in-law, the guy I went to school with who married my sister, he said to me, I, he had stopped smoking for about 40 years. He said, I think I just want one Paul Mall about this big and then God to take me home. But God didn't give him that. He took him home. But be prayed up. I don't care what the politicians are saying in Washington. My God, does God need to get into those people? Holy moly, if we ever need God again with these atheists that are running this country, that say that God was never part of this country, what liars they are. It's written in stone. It's written in word that this country was founded on the Judeo-Christian values. Not any other religion. On Christianity. That's where it was founded in the God of the Bible. This Bible right here. If they would only follow this, we would lose 90% of our problems. Amen? Amen? The second point. Nehemiah was direct in his prayer. He prayed the right kind of prayer. He wasn't vague. He was specific with his prayer to the Lord. He made his request known to God. His prayer to the Lord was from his heart. He just didn't pray for a short time. There was humbleness. There was confidence in his prayers. Folks, don't give up on your prayers. Don't give up on your children. Keep encouraging. Keep praying for them. Praying for yourself also. Praying for the two pastors of this church. You know, we always laugh, you know. Oh, uh, I know it was told to me. I told Pastor Steve this. I'll never forget this. I was having a cup of coffee in the church I was pastoring. And a guy went by. He looked in. And he said, oh, I could do this job. All you do is drink coffee all day. Huh? They don't see half of it. They don't see Pastor down at the airport. And poor Sharon going back and forth to pick him up. I would have picked him up. Uber, $35, I would have picked him up. Uh, we also need to have confidence in when we deliver our request to Jesus. Be honest and be sincere. Talk to the Lord and pour out your heart to him. You know, when, when a Christian says to you, hey, how you doing? If you're not doing good, say, you know what, I'm not doing good today. I don't feel too good today. They might say, oh, that's good, see you. But... Don't, don't say, oh, everything is great. Your arm is hanging off. No, everything is great. I feel good. No, it's not. It's okay to be honest. We have so many promises from the Lord that we can rely upon them and remind ourselves about these promises and who's in control. I'm not twisting God's arm, but I am at times reminding him of the promises that he gave us. So did Nehemiah. He reminded the Lord of his promise in Nehemiah 1.9. Now, in Isaiah 41.10, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Boy, this is, you could do a, a message on that scripture alone. But in this scripture, God gives us four reasons for us to be encouraged. This scripture is for us today as much as it was for the prophet when he penned it. We do not have to be afraid. The Lord, the King of Kings, is on our side. We don't have to be afraid about paying bills, about uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. We just need to be praying to the Lord that he's always with us. Now, we folks, we got to do our part too. Don't get me wrong. Don't take your credit card and say, you know what, Joe just said if I go to... Roosevelt Field, charge up $5,000. God's going to take care of it. No. No, he's not. We have to do our part. We have to be prudent also. Two, then we're told don't be discouraged, meaning don't lose courage or be alarmed. Don't fear the stock market, politicians, the TV. God is with us. Listen, I bet you a lot of folks got worried about all this blizzard that was going to happen. And it is a blizzard upstate. Uh, I don't live in Buffalo. Sorry about the people in Buffalo. They, I heard they're getting two feet. But when I turned on the TV this morning, and I looked out the window, it was raining, and it was early. It was probably 4.30, and I was having my coffee, and here's this newscaster saying, we'll bring you up to date on the blizzard. We have 10 tons of salt. I said, I, I looked around. I said, who is this guy talking? I backed Dick Mary and said, what? What'd you say? This is what happens when you're too old. But anyway, <laughs> God is going to give us his strength, spiritual strength. He will help us. And fourth, God, not the world, will uphold us with his victorious right hand. Nehemiah prayed in faith. He prayed knowing that there was power in prayer. He prayed with earnestness and with direct request. And then he got God's wonderful results all through prayer. Folks, when we pray, and we should pray, tell the Lord what's going on. I always say, pray in faith, believe in faith, believe on this word, tell the Lord what's going on, put it right back in his hands. He's the one that's in control. That does not mean that we do not do what we're supposed to do. But he's not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. He's not coming in the kitchen and saying, let me put the toast in for you today. Uh-uh, he's not doing that. We have a part to play in our walk with Christ. But what we can't do, rest assured, that he can do and will do. Nehemiah was let go of his duties, and the king allowed him to return to Jerusalem. The king even gave him letters for Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, for all the building materials. He got what he asked for, not by his strength, but by the power in God of this universe. There is power in prayer. Jesus prayed, and he is our example. Meaning, if the Lord prayed, we got to pray also. Pray every day. Pray when things are going well. Pray when life is putting you in that squeeze, and sometimes the storms of life come upon you. Pray. Be an encourager. Listen, for those of you that have children kind of young, this is a different world than when my father said, this is what I want you to do. Now, I used to curse the old man out. I did. He was in the car going down Linden Boulevard when I did it. You think I'd say it to his face? But sometimes we're meeting with resistance with our children today. They have a little different mindset at times. Stay with them. Encourage them. Lift them up. Pray for them. Don't get too excited. I should talk. I used to get excited. I was the excitable one. But keep praying for them. God will meet the challenge. He will. Most jobs have training sessions about all kinds of subjects. Uh, when I worked in the bank, I told the manager, you know, we have more meetings in this bank than they have in the Pentagon do you realize that? In a bank. They have them so they can handle whatever comes up next. Our military are always training. You think that they're sitting by? Nope. They're always training. Even when nothing is happening, they are training. So if called upon for action, 
They are ready and they're up to speed. So we should also be in prayer. Praying not just when things become difficult. We should be praying long before things become difficult. Every day, get up and pray. Uh, I was ready to leave this morning. My wife and I, we stopped. We prayed about the message. We prayed that God's word would go forth. We prayed for Pastor Steve. I thought he was on a plane at 5 o'clock. Uh, little did I know, but he's here with us anyway. Pray always, speak to Jesus. And in conclusion, there are things we should be doing in prayer if we expect to have God of heaven be delighted with those prayers. One, our Lord wants to hear our prayers. He does. He wants to reveal himself more and more to us, and we should go to him in all things in prayer. Two, we need to pray the correct way, meaning to pray for God's will to be done in our lives and in our situation. Not our will be done, but his will be done. Three, if there is any sin in our lives, get rid of it. Confess it to Jesus. Starve it. Sin needs to be dealt with completely and thoroughly, and our prayers will be answered when they are done with. Four, remember this. God can and does the impossible. Is anything too hard for the Lord? We can't, but we serve a mighty God who can. Let's pray. Father.